everyone. Um, I am Philip Lepolt. I'm the Dean of the College of Natural and Behavioral Sciences here at Dominguez Hills. And I'd like to thank everybody for joining together for today's forum. We're welcoming back three extraordinary alumni as part of our Toro Industry Day with Raytheon. Um, and to our alumni, Juanita, Erica, and Ebony, um, your alma mater really appreciates your commitment to our students in the university. Um, the knowledge and expertise you'll be sharing today will help our students think about and move towards their career aspirations. Um, and we look forward to your ongoing engagement with us as we connect our talented and skilled students with our alumni network uh, at Raytheon. And to our students, we hope you'll use this opportunity today to learn from our graduates as they share their educational and professional journeys that led to their successful careers. We and they are here to help you succeed. Uh, so now I'm gonna turn it back to Felicia um, and just with the reminder, once a Toro, always a Toro. Awesome, thank you, Dean LaPaul. Um, as we, I know that all of our students here today wanna to know a little bit more about these industries and um, what are the different ways that, um, how to enter these different workforces. And so um, today, as Dean LaPaul mentioned, we have three incredible alumni who work in, at Raytheon Technologies, who is the first organization that we are featuring today. And as we, as you hear about this program, we are looking forward to um, rotating different industries and making sure that we hit all of the major corporations such as um, healthcare, business, and for everyone that wants to be a part, um, to learn more about how to enter the workforce and then also learn about different opportunities that are available to you and what better way to learn from our fellow alums. And so I'd like to um, turn it over to alumna Juanita Dawson, who graduated with an MBA in and received her computer information systems degree back in 92 and is currently working with Raytheon Technologies as the Cybersecurity and Compliance Officer. And Juanita is gonna share a little bit more about Raytheon and with their mission of their organization. Juanita? Great, good afternoon. And thank you, Felicia, for that wonderful introduction. I'm excited to be back in the hallowed halls virtually of California State University, Dominguez Hills. And it gives me great pride as one of your distinguished alumni to speak with you today. So thank you so much for the opportunity to share information about Raytheon Technologies and the opportunities available. Uh, these opportunities have been afforded to me over the last 30 years. Raytheon Technologies is a company of innovators that draws upon nearly 200 years of experience in defense and aerospace with a legacy of innovation that includes the first airborne radio, the navigation to the moon and the first transmission from its surface, the first email, the first satellite photo, the first GPS signal and the highest resolution image of earth ever captured. By the numbers alone, we are one of the world's largest aerospace and defense companies with 195,000 employees and $74 billion in annual sales. Raytheon Technologies is headquartered in Waltham, Massachusetts. I'm a part of the Raytheon Intelligence and Space Business Unit. We deliver the disruptive technologies our customers need to succeed in any domain against any challenge. A developer of advanced sensors, training, and cyber and software solutions, Raytheon Intelligence and Space provides a decisive advantage to civil, military, and commercial customers in more than 40 countries around the world. With a workforce of over 35,000 employees, and in 2019, the sales were $14 billion. We are headquartered in Roslyn, Virginia, with operations across the US and internationally. As Felicia stated, uh, I am a senior manager in the digital technologies organization within Raytheon Intelligence and Space. I'm responsible for leading a team of professionals responsible for cybersecurity compliance, supplier compliance, governance, risk management, records management, disaster recovery, and business continuity practices. And as the principal liaison with key internal and external partners, internationally and domestically, product teams and support groups, my day-to-day -day includes reviewing local, state, federal, 
international and industry specific laws and regulations such as Defense Federal Acquisition Supplement, Sarbanes-Oxley, General Data Protection Regulations, and others to ensure that the digital technologies organizations practices and technologies are in compliance. So today, my colleagues and I will talk about the opportunities at Raytheon Technologies. And opportunities are available in every part of running the business and making it a success, such as finance, information technology, contracts, legal, manufacturing, human resources, supply chain, just to name a few. So uh, we thank you for uh, your attention and thank you for this opportunity to share. Thank you. Thank you, Juanita. Now, and Juanita is also gonna sit on the panel and I want to give an opportunity to the two other panelists who will be joining Juanita. We have Ebony Martin and Erica Tinsley, who I'd like to welcome to provide their welcome remarks and share a little bit about their, their uh, graduation when, when they were a part of Cali Dominguez Hills and a little bit about their background at Raytheon as well. But I just also wanted to Remind of, or just to let everyone know, these two are sit on the Alumni Advisory Council for Cal State Dominguez Hills, and we have a subcommittee with the Career Service Devel Workforce Development. And so these are their way of volunteering and giving back to Cal State Dominguez Hills to make sure our students um, are fully supported. So I'm going to go uh, and let's have Ebony start to give her her Okay, direction. thank you, Felicia. Um, welcome everyone. I'm, I'm excited to see all the faces here. I just wanted to um, start off by letting you know my name is Ebony Martin and I graduated from Dominguez Hills in 2010 and I graduated with my master's in negotiation, conflict resolution and peace building at the time. I did my undergrad at a different university and my undergrad was in business. Um, I work at Raytheon. I've been at Raytheon for 15 years now and I work as a contracts manager um, in our contracts department. One of the things I wanted to highlight is as Juanita has shared, Raytheon is a, an aerospace and defense company. Um, we're mainly a technical company. Um, we have a lot of engineers, but we also have other jobs and other positions, one of which I hold in, in industry, I mean, in areas such as contracts and um, finance, and we have legal, we have supply chain, um, we have we have a few others as well. So um, if you are interested and you're not technical, I'm here to let you know you don't have to be. You can still apply and you can essentially work at a company that is just as great as Raytheon. So um, I'm, I'll be here on the panel to answer questions, um, but I just wanted to uh, give you that short intro. And now I'll turn it over to my colleague Erica and she can share her background. You're on mute, Erica. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm off mute now. <laughs> Hi, sorry about that. So my name is Erica Tinsley. I'm class of 2015 um, at Cal State Dominguez. I studied, um, the program was computer technology, which had an emphasis on Homeland Security which is basically cybersecurity. So um, at, at my time at Dominguez, I did a lot of cybersecurity research, um, which helped um, steer my career into the cybersecurity area. So when I first started at Raytheon in 2017, I was working as a cybersecurity specialist. And then um, when I finished my master's degree um, in 2018, I transitioned to a um, systems engineering position. So now um, at Raytheon, I support multiple um, programs and I work on a technical side for a lot of the things that Juanita mentioned that we do. Um, I help support those programs and initiatives. And um, as both of my colleagues said, Raytheon is a very exciting place to work, highly technical, but it's, it's room for lots of growth and innovation, which makes um, you know, our contributions really important. And um, aside from the technical, technical things we do, we do have a, a lot of other opportunities because um, since we're such a huge corporation with hundreds of thousands of employees, we have different business units, which you know have positions for different um, backgrounds and majors. So I'm excited to be here and um, answer any questions you may have. Awesome. Thank you, ladies. 
Okay, we're going to go ahead and start our panel discussion. I'm going to turn it over now to Pina Patel, who's going to be the moderator and um, ask the questions that these burning questions you guys are all um, would like to hear answered. So at the end of the discussion, we'll have uh, a full Q&A and we welcome any of our students to, if there are questions that you have um, prior to before the next question, go ahead and put it in the chat box and we'll, we'll moderate that so we can make sure that they're answered. Um, with that, um, I'll turn it over to Panita. Thanks, Felicia. <clears throat> so thank you guys um, for um, giving like a brief introduction of yourself and your role at Raytheon. Could you describe a little bit more about like how would your day-to-day -day responsibilities look like? Oh, okay, hi, this is Juanita. Well, um, I said a little bit earlier, a little bit about my day to day, but you know, I'm responsible for cybersecurity compliance, governance, risk management. And because I ensure we are compliant and policies are in, pl in place, I may not be the first person you would expect to champion risk taking. After all, my job is to make sure we are compliant with the rules and regulations. So I do feel strongly that in order to be successful, professionals should take risk. And in my world, that can mean trying to project how new regulations would change the work in the future and other things. Uh, so I think risk taking has a lot to do with what I do all day, um, having the courage to step outside of what you usually do to resolve some of those problems or to work on a project that is just outside of your norm. Uh, risk taking, of course, in the STEM environment, like Raytheon Technologies, can mean anything from trying new tools or programs to using entirely new skills. So my day to day is pretty, pretty full, pretty innovative. <laughs> and I'll add, so for me, contracts is the area that I work in. So a lot of people say, well, what is that? And what do you do? I get that question a lot. Well. So Raytheon is a company that we, we specialize in aerospace and defense products. And the things that we do, we have to go out and we have to purchase them. And one of the things that I do in contracts is I'm the one that's responsible for initially going out and getting the request for a proposal. Proposal is, is when we bid on things, they call them proposals. Um, I'm the one that's responsible for putting a proposal together with the help of a team. And I'm the one that submits that proposal. And then I, I make sure that um, whatever it is that we say we're gonna do once we, we I negotiate the proposal as well. And then I, I make sure that whatever it is that we say we're gonna do, we follow through on. And I have a team of people that I work with. I have an engineer that I work with. I have a finance manager. I have a supply chain manager. Um, I have a quality manager. We all work together um, when, when we're putting this proposal together. So we're a team. And then once we actually get the award, we work together as a team to execute. So again, it's my job to keep my team, um, we'll, we'll say aligned as to exactly what it is that we're doing. We usually have something called a statement of work that we have to follow. And within that statement of work, it talks about everything that, that we said that we were gonna do, which we, we won the award to do. So there's often times where I have, um, for simplicity, let's just say if we were gonna build a car. So sometimes I have an engineer that wants to build a car that say, oh, a very, very expensive car and they wanna give you know, extra bells and whistles on a car. But you know, I'm the one that goes back to the actual document, the contract, and I remind the engineer that you know, we didn't bid that. We, we told our customer, this is the type of car that we're gonna provide and this is what they gave us money to go produce. And so we wanna make sure that we stick to the contract and give them exactly what it is they're looking for. So a lot of people call it um, like a, a, a legal type of a job in the sense, because I, I am kind of the one that has to read the documents. I have to go around and remind people like we can or we can't do that. Um, in terms of the money, I have to make sure financially that we're submitting invoices. And then on the other end, whoever our customer is, I have to make sure that they're paying those invoices. So um, it is very similar to a, a legal job, but but it's it's not exactly legal because there are times when I have to go to legal when I have questions, but it, it, it might not sound that 
exciting. Um, sometimes it is exciting. Sometimes it's not because it's a lot of reading. But that's pretty much um, what I do in my in my day to day. And then in in addition to the actual job, I mean, what we do is we have a lot of meetings. So, you know, we we have to meet with the program. We have to understand what the requirements are. We have to meet with um, some other teams. We have to meet with the customer. You have to be in constant contact with the customer, letting them know what's going on. When things are late, you're the one that relays that type of information back to the customer. You want to make sure you keep a good relationship with your customers so that they they know and they trust you. So, you know, when you're calling them with good news, they're happy. And when it's bad news that, you know, mm -hmm that sometimes that they're happy as well, even though they're not really happy to receive bad news. But um, pretty much that is, um, that's what we do in, in contracts. Okay, so, um, and over in engineering, we do um, a lot of hands-on with the technical stuff. So the, like Ebony said, once they get the contracts and you know, they advise the customer what we're going to produce. That's where the engineering team comes in, where we're actually building what we promised um, with that contract. So um, my day to day, I'm doing a lot of testing and simulation. I work really closely with our software team when they develop the software for our products. Um, I'm usually testing them to make sure it performs up to par and it's in compliance um, with, you know, it, like as far as the cybersecurity aspect and the safety. And also, um, I spend a lot of time in the lab, like I said, working very hands-on with the things that we build at um, Raytheon. So a lot of the stuff that we do at Raytheon is, um, you know, classified information. So the things that we do in the lab, just what we can say is like we're building um, things for the military. So just to keep us safe, to protect the infrastructure and I mean, it's exciting. Like I said, it's very important because we do have to make sure it's accurate. So we spend hours and hours testing things, sometimes running tests overnight or over a week, you know, just to make sure that the results are up to par with what we've promised. Awesome. Thank you so much, ladies. Um, so like maybe if you can provide like maybe some type of um, share like what has your career path look like, um, especially for our students as well? Like, um, do you think that our students will be okay with um, just having a bachelor's degree or do you recommend maybe um, they, um, you know, get a, a master's um, degree? And then kind of like, how was like your career trajectory leading up to Raytheon? So, so I can go first. Um, so you don't necessarily have to have a master's degree or higher to work at a company such as Raytheon. I would highly though recommend that you do have a degree, okay, some type of a degree. We have a, 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 a bunch of jobs, job opportunities that are out there, different levels, lots of entry level jobs. Entry level, in general, entry level usually requires a four year degree. Um, there are there are some cases where we have employees that do not have a four-year degree. Um, they're either in the process of working on getting one, um, or some people just don't have a degree at all. They're, they do have jobs, um, but I would highly recommend you have a degree because I think Erica shared, there are lots of opportunities within the company and the way you're going to um, be able to um, take advantage of some of those opportunities is if you're able to to move around you have to have that degree that's that's the basic and that's one of the requirements if you ever go out if you have time you can go to the Raytheon website um, you can just look at their jobs and you'll notice that 90 percent of them say you know for your degree now you don't always have to have a technical degree and that's what I'm here to share with you guys like I said my background was business so um, you can have just you can almost have any type of a background and um, apply to different jobs. You might not get a technical job if you don't have a technical background, but we have supply chain um, that you don't have to be technical to get in there. Um, and finance, you don't necessarily have to be technical to get in finance. You just kind of have to understand how the numbers work. And the good thing about um, a company such as Raytheon is they offer lots of training opportunities. So even if you don't necessarily know the job inside and out, if you're able to just get in and start that job, you'll learn on the job. There, there's training that will be provided to you. Um, there are people out around that would help you. So I would definitely not, I, I would encourage you if you were even halfway interested to just apply um, to some of those opportunities that are out there because um, you just never know. 
Um, in terms of having a advanced degree, I would recommend it. Um, if you wanted to get into say senior level and management type of positions, um, just because they're not that many of those and they are competitive. So you'll notice that a lot of our, our senior leaders do have um, masters. A lot of people have doctorates and PhDs. Um, again, not required, um, but recommend it if you wanted to get, you know, you wanted to grow and in, in, let's just say become CEO of our company. Thank you. As far as um, technical positions, they do require you to have a four year STEM degree. Um, and some of the positions, for example, if you want to work in cybersecurity, um, like where I first started, they, re they require you to have an 8570 certification, um, which is offered through CompTIA. So it's basically like a certification that says that you are, um, you have the skill set or the know-how to work in, on cyber compliance. Um, there's multiple um, certifications that can um, that can meet that requirement. Um, if you look up 8570, you can see more about it. So that in combination with a four year um, STEM degree is um, pretty much the minimum qualifications to work on the technical side as far as like engineering um, or um, software engineering or even in the cyber, the cyber security um, area at Raytheon. But um, Raytheon, like Ebony mentioned, they do have plenty of um, learning opportunities, even once you're at Raytheon, um, they have courses. We offer courses to our employees where you can learn different things um, that we do there, more detail about space type of information, even um, on the products that we make, they have training courses. And they also have um, where if, you're, if you start there without an advanced degree, you have the opportunity to pursue an advanced degree and they have tuition assistance. Thank you, Erica. We have a question from one of our um, participants, and you may have already answered it with the resources that Raytheon offers, but if you can elaborate maybe a little bit more for this question. Seeing as how computer technology moves very quickly, how does the panel keep up to date with new technology entering the tech industry? I would say just doing continued education, just staying up to date, um, certifications, training, on-site training, um, a lot of the universities offer online, sometimes they offer online um, training where you can get credits um, for, or non-credit, but you can get the information that you need. And um, I would say right now, what's really, um, cybersecurity is a really growing fail, it's still growing. And I think we just had a meeting last week and they said that that's the direction that a lot of the departments are going. They're training um, many people up on cyber. so. Just if people are trying to get into the technical aspect and they're trying to figure out which direction to go, what to learn, I would definitely um, look into cybersecurity coursework or cybersecurity advanced degrees um, just to stay relevant and have that experience as far as what companies will be looking for, not just Raytheon, but most aerospace defense and technical companies. Yeah, and I'll just add, um, Internally, so let's say for employees that are already working at Raytheon, one of the things I know we have in contracts is a council and their main job is to keep us up to date on the latest changes and the, 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 the things that we need to know. So there's always training that's being provided to us and there's a multitude of emails that come to us and just the information that you need to know specifically um, with, with regards to changes. Um, it, it, it's there for you. So I, I guess I, what I'm trying to say is I wouldn't worry so much about um, keeping up because we have people that have full-time jobs and their their job is to make sure that we keep up with what we need to know within our, our industry. And the same thing goes with um, engineering. I'm sure they have a council as well um, in, in Juanita's area as well. I know we all get lots and lots of emails. So um, that's one of the ways that we make sure we, we keep up with technology is people make sure that we do, they, they give us that information. <laughs> like not, another way for us, um, we all are members of all kinds of professional organizations. We have several certifications. So we get a chance to see what's going on out in the industry. So that's a, another way to really keep uh, on top of what the tools of the trade, you know, are what's coming down. Uh, being in compliance, that's what 
I'm usually reading about and doing, you know, what's new coming up? Are there some new laws and regulations that we need to make sure uh, we stay compliant with? Uh, make sure that our engineers are uh, looking at uh, those requirements and regulations when they're building the products, making sure when we talk to uh, contracts that those kind of reg requirements and regulations are in the contracts and, and even the, uh, the statement of work. So being members of other uh, uh, professional organizations is another avenue to, to uh, gain that, uh, those skills. Nina, and I, I apologize. I know you asked there was that your question was a two part question that I didn't um, answer. And I don't know if you want to go back to it. It might be important for us to share with the uh, students kind of what our career path has looked like. So, I mean, I'm happy to answer that yeah, question. Oh, yeah. Like, or if you want to move on to another question, just mm -hmm. let me know. Oh, yeah. no, thanks, Ebony. Um, I, I, I definitely think that our students would definitely love to to hear maybe like where you maybe like mm -hmm. interned and then like entry level positions and, you know, just like like your career trajectory yeah. of getting to Raytheon. So yes, thank you. Sure. Okay. So I'll go, um, I'll, I'll try to go okay. quick. So my, um, so my background, well, first of all, I'll say that um, that's saying that, you know, you kind of do what you see or what you know, or you, what your parents do. So that, that, that holds true for me. So my mother was also in the same industry. She worked at um, Northrop Grumman, which is one of Raytheon's competitors. So naturally as a kid growing up, I used to see you know, her and she worked in contracts just like me. So I saw what she did and, and it's funny how I just kind of gravitated to the exact same industry, the exact same job. So personally, the way that I got to where I am is I worked in, um, uh, as an intern, I worked at, at Northrop Grumman actually as an intern um, for a few summers while I was in school. Um, and then when I graduated, um, they offered me a job in their supply chain department, which I took, I knew nothing about, but I took the job and I said, you know what, I'll get in here and I'll learn. And when I, when I started working there, I started really learning about, okay, this is what they do and this is the work and these are the responsibilities and, and I can do this. And then I started to see, oh, okay, these are other opportunities within the company. These are other jobs. And so, um, I just, I mean, naturally I got into a rotation program at the company and then I got into contracts and I started to ju just do well and I did a lot of training. Um, there were, I had mentors along the way that kind of looked out for me and um, helped me and I'd say, um, encouraged me to apply to other jobs, which I did. And then um, I, I came over to Raytheon. They actually reached out to me. One thing that you'll find when you get in this industry is, um, we share employees, I guess you should say. A lot of people go from one company to the next. So uh, Raytheon reached out to me and they wanted me to bring my contracts background to their organization. And I said, sure, why not? And again, they put me in a rotation program, a leadership development program, um, which I did. And um, that kind of is kind of how I got to, to where I am now. Um, I had a lot of help along the way. Again, I had mentors. Um, and managers that kind of looked out for me and helped me. But um, that's just basically um, how I got in is I didn't really know anything about any of the jobs, but I just decided I was gonna start as an intern and I was gonna hit the ground running and just learn as much as I could learn. And here I am. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is Juanita. For me, um, I, I never worked before at all. After, I mean, in high school, people will have a job and I never worked at all, uh, just went straight away to college. And, uh, re, you know, got my undergrad is uh, in math, BS in mathematics. And uh, once I finished that undergrad, I went to work as uh, an actuarial associate. And so there I created financial models and uh, defined and analyzed risk. And those financial models were used to create insurance policies to be negotiated through the United States. And because I work with the rates management system, this led me to information technology and developing those financial systems. And then I found some opportunities at Raytheon developing systems and receiving a chance to work on special engineering projects and programs. Uh, I do believe my undergraduate degree prepared me for those roles. Then I found that I needed more because I aspired to lead programs and organizations. And I already had that deep technical background for my undergraduate degree and work experience. 
Uh, I just needed a broader view of the business and organization to really understand where technology fit into the organization. And so at the time, um, I didn't realize um, I was searching for that seat at the table and wanted to make sure I had a competitive advantage. And so this is when I returned to school at California State University, Dominguez Hills to pursue a graduate degree. And Raytheon has opportunities, has tuition reimbursement programs, advanced study programs to assist you with pursuing this degree. And yes, I do believe my MBA uh, from Cal State Dominguez did assist me in preparing for my current role. Uh, the learning experience, the learning experiences, I think, equipped me with technical, managerial, leadership skills to be able to lead projects and programs, which led to more responsibility, which led to higher levels of advancement. Uh, the courses and projects in the curriculum at Cal State Dominguez were broad enough to allow for understanding that big picture of an organization and then narrow enough to be able to focus on select areas of an organization. So the B MBA also uh, led to some networking opportunities with other students and professors. So uh, having, having a degree, it, it is uh, important because it opens up a lot of doors and helps you get that seat at the table. Um, um, Ebony mentioned something very important. She talked about having a mentor and that kind of what, that's kind of what guided my career and my, um, me choosing a technical um, degree at Dominguez. Um, one of my favorite professors who actually still works there, Dr. Boadi um, in the physics department. She, then she was in the computer science department, but um, she, you know, inspired me to participate in research, apply for scholarships. So that kind of, um, offered me a lot of opportunities and even internships. And I started off interning at Aerospace Corporation. I was there for about two years. Um, I interned there and when I graduated from Dominguez in 2015, they offered me a full-time position. So I worked there in software QA, um, supporting their programs. And then um, I went over to Raytheon to pursue a career in cybersecurity. Um, so um, all the opportunities I had at Dominguez Hills, which doing my research that I was doing there um, and participating in all of the programs that, they're, that they offered at Cal State Dominguez, it helped me develop a really good professional portfolio. Um, my resume was really good um, when I was an undergrad, um, thanks to my, the mentorship I got from Dr. Boadi and also other professors like Dr. Vivian Price. And I also um, participated at Dominguez. They have a really Good program near the negotiation and conflict resolution, the one that um, Ebony also got her master's from. I actually did that program in undergrad. And um, like we all mentioned, Raytheon is really big on compliance. That's one thing that every, every area is committed to um, being compliant just because of the nature of work we do. And I think almost any business compliance is important. So um, the NCRP program, it teaches you how to um, come up with um, negotiate with your, because every day of work is like negotiating, whether you're in a meeting with your colleagues, you're trying to figure something out and conflict resolution. I just kind of like relate that to compliance because you have to make sure you're in compliance so you don't have to face additional conflict. So um, Cal State Dominguez really helped shape my career path. I'm still kind of, well, I guess I'm kind of mid-career now, but I've been at Raytheon three and a half years and a lot of the things that I've learned and a lot of things that I did there is what helped to get me where I am today. Great, thank you. And so um, I'll go over to the next question. Uh, what has been like maybe the greatest challenge during your career journey? Um, okay, I'll go first. Um, there. There's been, of course, many challenges. And, and I think as my colleagues uh, can tell you as well, obstacles do come up and can disrupt your flow. And I feel for me, a fear of risk taking, uh, that was my, my major challenge because I saw it as a fear of failure. So I had to find some ways to remove those barriers so that others can join me on the path to success. And I think uh, removing those barriers that possibly interfere with success 
is very helpful, especially if you feel hesitant to take a risk. So if you know you have uh, the leadership behind you to tackle some of those issues, you can find uh, that very empowering and that way it helps you empower others as well. So for me, I'll, I'll say um, one of the biggest challenges is just the people. Um, everybody is different and people operate in different capacities. And I think I shared earlier that we have to work as a team and we have to work together. So in order for me to do my job, like I rely on my engineer, my finance person, my quality team. I, I mean, we all work together um, to make things happen. And so sometimes you have different personalities that just don't don't work well together. Um, it's same thing that I found when I was in school, um, in my undergrad and my graduate studies, um, you know, working together, you have a, a common goal and some people arrive at that goal different. Um, when you have deadlines, sometimes people adhere to them, sometimes they don't. So those types of things, just people and personalities, I think has been the, the biggest challenge because in a, essentially your success is dependent on what others do around you. Um, and so it's you trying to navigate what you need to do and, and working through the issues so that, that you're able to be successful. Um, and, th and that could just be challenging. Um, I think for me, um, challenge being in a, a highly technical position, being an engineer, just being, it's not that many women um, in that field. So just kind of getting the, you know, earning your seat at the table and actually being heard, you know, your work being actually, you know, respected and valued at the same level as your, you know, male counterparts. And also just not having that, just overcoming that glass ceiling. Sometimes it is, you know, you work really hard and it may not be recognized all the time. And also, um, I would say during actually being in school time management because um, at Cal State Dominguez, we have a lot of, there is a lot of returning students. A lot of students already have families or they're already, you know, working. So just being able to work and manage school and manage everyday life, that can be a challenge too while, you know, going, pursuing your degree too. So I think that's the challenge I had while I was in school, just managing time and staying on track and then as far as working is just basically working very, very hard to produce and uh, produce, make contributions. Thank you. Um, so we're looking at the clock and I really, we're about like 50 minutes until the session ends. And I really want to um, get provide like this opportunity for students to ask all of you guys questions. Um, but I wanna ask one last one. What is a one tip that you can offer to all the attendees here today? Um, and it could just be anything in general. So I can I can go first. Um, I would just I would just say um, work really hard in everything that you do. Always put your best foot forward, and just remember that. Um, your word is your bond. I know that's a phrase that you hear a lot, but when you say you're gonna do something, make sure you follow through. And that could be with your studies now in your group settings. Um, I know we, we're all challenged with COVID. Um, we have a bunch of Zoom meetings, whatever it is with your family, with your friends. If you say you're gonna do something, make sure you do it because people will remember that about you. And, and that, that goes in the workforce as well when you get in the industry that you're going to start working in. Um, if you make a promise, make good on that promise um, because your reputation will precede you. And uh, I agree. And I think uh, in addition to what we all have noted during this discussion, uh, building relationships and keeping in touch with others uh, because relationships are key to networking in the industry and finding your next opportunity. And it's helpful to find a mentor or a small group of trusted colleagues that you can discuss your career goals and most of all, ask for help. None of us are superhuman. We are all some. We all sometimes become tired or overwhelmed by how we feel or when things don't go as planned. So take some advantage of the school resources as well, building those relationships. Yes, Thank and you. I would say um, I would say to use this time to build your portfolio, which is basically your resume, your CV 
um, because when you do start to apply for internships and jobs, that's what the recruiters or the HR is looking at because they don't know you personally. They're looking at you on paper. So just, you know, things happen, but just work really hard. Try to keep your GPA up and just do everything with integrity. And um, I would say just basically really work really hard on your resume, CV, get mentorship and people to help you in a career center. Um, I had that. I took advantage of all those opportunities at Cal State Dominguez too. And that's why I was able to get awesome internships that led to my career. So that's a tip that I have. All amazing um, information that you guys are offering for um, our students and our alums here today. Um, I want to uh, definitely open up this opportunity again uh, for any of you guys that would like to um, ask any questions to any of our panelists. Uh, feel free to open up your video um, and then you can um, unmute yourself and you can go ahead and ask your questions personally. Um, if you're unable to do that, feel free to add it into the chat box and I can go ahead and start reading those out loud. Um, one of them that we did receive from Lee, um, he's, he mentioned or he or she mentioned, my father and brother both work um, as contract officers for the government. I'm also interested in working in contracts. Will my military experience help when applying to Raytheon? I don't have work experience prior to the military and I'm a business administration major. So, so I can, I can, um, I can start answering that um, since I'm in contract. So your, um, your background, your experience, absolutely. It all, it all helps because um, I think I shared this before. Um, everybody is, is different. And when you apply to a job, um, you know, your unique situation is what they're going to be interested in learning about. So um, it, if you have background in military, um, if you know anything about contracts, absolutely, that's going to give you a slight edge because you you somewhat understand the basics of, of what they do in the organization. So I would definitely highly encourage you if you're interested in contracts to, to apply. Thank you, Ebony. Would anyone else like to ask any questions? Uh, I have a question. Uh, first of all, thank you for the presentation. It was very well organized. Um, any advice for people that uh, apply for this new position that they just opened up at Raytheon, which is a new college graduate financial analyst? Um, anything in particular that HR, anything anybody's looking at? Um, are you thinking of, I mean, are you looking at the job description or a job posting? Is that? Uh, yeah, I just uh, I just applied recently, but I'm just wondering, like, if I don't get it, maybe I have a, I guess some tips on maybe how to improve my uh, resume or uh, oh, okay. anything. You know? Yeah, you know, uh, I think in some cases HR may have uh, one of those feedback processes where uh, if you are if you don't receive the the job, there's I think a contact. I know it says do not email back, but maybe there's a contact number where HR will give you some feedback on what those managers may have been looking for. Or when you review with the uh, Career Resource Center, make sure your resume is matching what those requirements are so that you will um, be considered for those roles. Sometimes it, it's just as simple as that, that there were some things that you didn't say on your resume that apply to that particular job and you probably have the experience or have what's needed, but it just wasn't reflected in your resume. So I would refer you to the Career Resource Center to make sure your resume is uh, matching up as well. But usually there's a feedback cycle from HR. Yeah, I wanted to, I want to add to that, Eric. Um, what I want to echo what Juanita just said and just say that um, make sure you read the job description whenever you're applying and make sure that whatever those keywords that are in that job description, make sure those are the keywords that you put down on paper. When, if, you're, if you're putting together a cover letter, make sure you say everything that they are looking for, make sure you put those words in there because I don't know the program, but I'll tell you that a lot of um, companies, Raytheon included, 
we use some type of a computer. And a lot of times it's not even a person looking at your paper, it's just a computer. So you want the computer to pick up on those words and then you want the opportunity just to have the interview right and then that's when you'll get to share your experience etc so just make sure you actually read the job description and whatever they're looking for that is exactly what you want to say that you have yes thank you yeah. appreciate it yes like like ebony said they do use an algorithm to basically look for keywords um on the resume which basically you know separates the ones that they feel most match the job qualifications and then it goes to an actual human so that's why I said when you're working on your CV, you can have like your general one, but always tailor it to the job you're applying for. And it's not like you're trying to put fluff on it. Sometimes those keywords are qualifications that you have, but you may have not thought of that adjective or that word to put on your resume. So just really read it closely and say, you know what, I do know how to do this, or I did do that in class, or I did learn that on one of my projects. And you can, and if you don't have any work experience, like I think you said you apply for a recent grad position. You know, if you don't have work experience, you can use your relevant coursework. If you took a class in finance that and you did a research project on finance, you can put that and put the um, the outcome of that on your resume as your experience in that area. And also, I know um, you guys have a student research day. Well, I don't know if you guys probably didn't have it because of COVID, but if you ever presented research and student research day, you can add that to your resume as well. Oh, well, thank you. I, yeah, because like you said, I don't, I don't have, I'm barely, uh, let's just say, getting my feet wet and I don't have the experience. Like I'm trying to gain that experience, but it's hard when I apply jobs. And like, for example, this one, right? It just, uh, the requ I mean, some requires me asking for experience, but <laughs> how can I get experience if I, if I don't get the opportunity to get me? So it was just like, just asking for new tips, how to improve on those weaknesses. Like you said, maybe uh, I didn't know I could put um, what I'd done in class and I could put that on my resume. That's new to me, which is, thank you for that. Projects that you worked on. And what Thank you so much for um, also suggesting for Eric the, um, to meet with the Career Center. Oh, yeah. uh, those are particular areas that we can definitely help you and explore um, those particular areas of like what we can help you include onto your resume if you don't have that experience yet, because we can still like provide you some suggestions and other things. And that goes for everybody here. So if you guys did uh, register for this event on Handshake, you can make one-on-one -on -one appointments with us. And then we also have like drop-ins too, that you can come in um, to, to kind of meet like with um, any of our career coaches to go over those or just having like any general questions um, after this too. So thank you. Yeah, um, I know even though I did not do internships before uh, I started working, I highly, highly recommend uh, some type of internship record um, or some type of work experience uh, because um, I, it's a win-win for the employers as well to um, have interns working for them uh, because you know we as an employer uh, we want that extra set of eyes to look at some of the things that we're doing. There may be some things that uh, you're learning in your classes that um, would really, you know, benefit an employer. You know, those concepts that you're studying, projects in school. Maybe we can uh, use some of those. And so it's a win-win for both. If you can get some type of uh, work experience or some type of internship uh, to be able to expand the employer as well as your own uh, skills and network. And I'll just add the obvious, you know, you have to be patient and you're going to probably have to apply a lot to a lot of jobs. I mean, I, I'm going to just state the obvious right now with this pandemic that's going on, a lot of people have lost jobs. And so there's a lot of competition in the workplace right now. Um, I'm seeing a lot of resumes and, they, and they're coming from people that have years and years of experience, you know, just applying for entry level jobs. And I'm interviewing them saying, you, you've been doing this for 20 years. You want a job that you know, requires zero experience. And they're saying, yes, I just want a job. So just know that you're competing with, with lots of people right now. I mean, this is a unique time. So 
don't give up and just um, apply, apply, apply um, to, to multiple jobs because you just need one, right? And once you get that one, like I shared, once you get, you get that one, once you're in there, you're in there. Thank you. Uh, we got a question in the chat box. Um, the question is, I'm currently an IT intern for Cal State Dominguez Hills uh, Department, and um, would there be any entry level IT careers at Raytheon? Uh, yes, uh, quite a few. And they're listed on the website. I think it's called jobs dot rtx dot com and the information will be available in your uh, career resource center or and i will give that to panita i'll give that to you if you don't have it already uh how to find jobs uh, there are if you are a freshman uh in in school there are internships for freshmen in fact we um in it we did a program kind of piloted uh, with my organization where we actually hired a person out of high school about to go into college. So there are opportunities and uh, there are a lot uh, within the whole organization of Raytheon, they're looking at ways to uh, be able to bring in that pipeline. So, um, and, and we've started as early as like a high school graduate that will be going to college. So. There are a lot of opportunities and I can get that to you. Great. And then Gilbert also added um, the website that Juanita just mentioned. If you guys would like to explore a little bit more of the job opportunities at Raytheon on that website. Uh, we're about two minutes in. Um, I just wanted to thank everybody, um, especially like the panelists, Dean LaPole, all of you guys for joining us today. Uh, for this amazing uh, panel discussion and the beginning of our Toro Industry Days. Um, I just wanted to kind of reiterate as well that the Career Center is here to help you in um, any types of ways. Um, tomorrow we do have our Arts and Entertainment Expo. Again, like even though it's Arts and Entertainment Expo, there might be um, different positions such as like in finance, Techno technology and so many other positions in that area. So really take that opportunity as well to network with other companies in different areas. Um, and so then we also have different areas, like how I mentioned, like our drop-ins throughout the week. And then also definitely join us on Handshake to take a look at all of our upcoming events um, until the end of the semester. And then you can also meet with us. Uh, but again, thank you, Ebony, Juanita, and Erica for joining us today. Your information is so amazing. And I know that everybody that's uh, participated in this panel really deeply appreciates all the information you shared with us today. Felicia and Dilapol, I wanted to also hand it to all of you guys too, just in case if you have any um, last remarks that you would like to share as well. Yes, I will. Um, to all of our students, thank you for joining us today. And again, I'd like to echo Panita's, Panita's sentiments of thanking the panel um, who are our alumni, our proud alums and ambassadors of the university who continue to support our students and are always here for any of the help that you guys all need. Um, special thanks to Ebony, Juanita and Erica who helped plan this, our first program featuring Raytheon. Without them, this, we wouldn't have been able to start it and kick it kick this program off but I also and I also wanted to share with our students we have two up, we have some upcoming amazing programs that I want to make sure that you are aware of that the um, the Office of Alumni Relations does provide we have a Toro Tuesday Power Hour coming up on November 24th um, these the Power Hour will feature alumni in a variety of different industries as well to share their story and so if there's one that catches your eye I welcome you to participate and join in on that call also, we have our alumni scholarship that is scholarship that is supported by our alumni. It's one of the many ways that they give back to the university. In the spring, I, I encourage you to apply, apply early. Look for the CCDH alumni scholarship in the financial aid portal. Um, as long as you qualify, um, you have the opportunity to be interviewed to win a $2,000 scholarship. One is given out for, to one undergraduate and one graduate student. So um, I encourage you all to apply for that. Um, in the spring. So with that, um, Dean LaPalt, do you have anything? 
No, I just want to, again, thank, thank our, our alumni um, for taking the time to do this and, and all of you students as well. Uh, I did put some advertising in the chat that we were talking about graduate programs. Um, CSUDH does offer a master's in cybersecurity, uh, which is a fairly new program. And, and also starting this year, headed up by uh, Dr. Bawade, who uh, Erica mentioned, uh, we now have new masters in um, systems engineering, which we didn't get much time to talk specifically about today, um, but but uh, our campus is committed to providing these types of growing opportunities for our students as well. So we hope you'll check those out. Thank you all. Thank you, Dean LaPaul. And as a reminder, this was recorded. So if you wanna um, tune back in and watch this recording for any information that you may, may have missed, it will be um, posted on the CCDH alumni website um, under events. So we'll make sure that it goes out to you as well. Um, with that, we'll conclude today's program and you all enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you Take Bye. care. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.